Slava Bogu. The English translation would be praise God. Today I want to speak with you a little bit off topic, what the topic of choice was, but um, something that I've been thinking about lately. If you have your Bibles, open with me to Matthew chapter 14, and we're going to read from verse 15. And after that, we're going to go to chapter 15 of Matthew. So start with 14, 15. The story is, uh, it's actually a miracle that Jesus performed, and he did the miracle twice, back to back. Uh, the same miracle. It's one of the only times in the Bible that we see the same, pretty much the same exact miracle, very unique miracle, happen twice. And they happened uh, one chapter, and then in the second chapter, the miracle happened again. And I want to just think about the lessons we can gain from this uh, miracle that he performed. So Matthew 14, 15. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from, sorry, 15. When, now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve basketfuls of the broken pieces left over. And those who ate were five thousand men besides women and children. And then chapter 15, verse 32. 15, 32. Then Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion on the crowd because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And I'm unwilling to send them away hungry, lest they faint on the way. And the disciples said to him, Where are we to get enough bread in such a desolate place to feed so great a crowd? And Jesus said to them, How many loaves do you have? They said, Seven, and a few small fish. And directing the crowd to sit down on the ground, he took the seven loaves and the fish, and having, having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied, and they took up seven baskets full of the broken pieces left over. Those who ate were four thousand men, besides women and children. So the first thing that I hope we can see in these passages we read is, how is it possible that the disciples forgot the first miracle? Like, Jesus did a really great thing. He provided for thousands of people with just a few pieces of bread and fish. And we read in chapter 14 about the miracle. We jump over to chapter 15. And they're again facing the same situation. They need to feed a lot of people. And the disciples are like, well, we're stuck. What do we do now? We, we've never been here before. We, we don't know what to do. How, how can we feed all these people? And when I read these passages, I thought, that's really bizarre. That's really weird. How can they possibly forget? Jesus just did this. I mean, we all know that Jesus' ministry on earth was only three and a half years. So... These miracles took place in that time frame, those three and a half years. How can they forget? And the message that I want to share with you today is uh, this story is written not to make the disciples look bad. Like, oh, these are such bad disciples. How can they forget? These stories are actually written for us because the disciples were human just like us. And we are prone to forget what God did for us. That is the one... The uh, thing about humans is we have a memory that sometimes fails us. We just forget. And when we begin to forget, we stop trusting God. Because we forgot that he did something for us back then. How can he possibly help us now? We begin to forget. Uh, and today I want to focus on 
the couple more lessons that we can gain from these stories of feeding the multitude. Um, the first lesson I want us to capture from here is Jesus takes a little bit of what we have and he multiplies it. If you guys think about it, uh, this miracle with uh, multiplying the food, right, the bread and the fish, did Jesus need any bread or fish to multiply it? Could he have just delivered them from who knows where? He didn't really need it. He didn't need the fish. He did not need the bread. He could have just miraculously delivered it to the people. But he asked them, he said, what do you have? They said, we have, we have five breads and two fish. We just have a little tiny bit. Five breads, two fish. He said, bring me what you have. Bring what you have. And the first lesson that I see is God, if he wants to do a miracle in our life, if he wants to do something great in our life, he looks to see what we have. He doesn't, he doesn't just do things. He sees the individual and the things that we have. And he wants to use what we have. He wants to use the gifts that we have. He wants to use the talents that he's given us, the ability to share his word, the ability to sing, the ability to help those in need of food. All these gifts and talents that he's given us, he wants us to use what we have. So as we read and ponder on these stories, I want us to consider each and every one of us. What is it that God has put in your heart individually to you that he wants to use? What is it within you that you see a talent, a gift, something that he's just putting on your heart, just knocking in your heart to use for his glory? He asks you to bring to him what you have. The second story that I, uh, the second lesson that I see here is that God does the unimaginable. Uh, when I read the story, like my mind couldn't understand how in the world is it possible. So here you have, you have five breads and you have two fish. And all of a sudden, as the disciples are handing out these breads and this fish, they start multiplying. And I tried to use my human mind. How is that possible? Did they, did they pop out of the ground? Did they just float from the sea? Did they fall out of heaven? Where did the fish and the bread come from? Like, it's almost as if they got created on the spot, like right there on the spot. And my mind just couldn't understand it. How is that possible? That's not possible. And the lesson that I want us to gain from that is when we bring to God what we have, he can do the impossible. He can do the unimaginable the things that our mind cannot explain, the things that no human can explain. Uh, because God, he's an almighty God. He's the God who created the world from nothing. There was nothing, and all of a sudden the world came into existence. So we serve a God who is almighty, all-powerful, and he can do the unimaginable. And the third thing that I see here is, uh, do you remember how many baskets were collected in the first multiplying of the bread. How many baskets did they collect? Does anybody remember? There were 12. And how many disciples did we have? There were 12. The lesson is quite simple. God wants to have an individual work with every one of us. There isn't one disciple of Jesus Christ who is left to the side. He wants to use every single person individually. Uh, he could have handed out the bread. He could have gained all the glory handing out the bread. He decided to bless the bread, give it to the disciples, and the disciples gave it to the people. And every one of them got a basket to remind them that God can do the unimaginable. So I want us to keep that in mind. Um, just reflect. Right now we celebrated Thanksgiving, and we took the time to remember all the things that God has given us and done for us. And I want us to remember all the miracles he's done in our life. I want us to remember all the mercies he's given us, all the things he's done in our life. And just to remember that we serve a, a very great, a very powerful God who wants to work with everybody individually to do the unimaginable. May his name be praised. Amen.